Hello everybody, welcome to another tutorial. So today we're going to have some fun with floating point exceptions, which means that we're going to be looking at the MXCSR register. So this is uh, the Multimedia State Flags register, and it records exceptions that occur with SSE floating point operations. So it's 32 bits wide, I've drawn it out just here. That's uh, bit 0 on the right, all the way through to bit 31 on the left. We've got um, 6 bits at the start for recorded exceptions, then we've got the normals are zero bit, then we've got exception masks, we've got the rounding function which should be familiar from uh, looking at the conversion instructions, and we've got flush the normals to zero over here at bit number 15, and the rest are reserved. So we're not talking about the normals, we're talking about exceptions. Uh, there's six exceptions that can be generated by the SSE instructions when they're doing a floating point, and this is in addition to regular exceptions like invalid operations or uh, segmentation faults. So if you uh, try to write to memory that some other program owns, uh, you're going to get a segmentation fault, and that's got nothing to do with the MXCSR register. Yeah, that's not going to be recorded here. The MXCSR register's got other business to deal with. Um, but there's a flag to indicate if the exception has occurred, and a mask bit to indicate whether the exception should be ignored by the CPU, or, indeed, if they should be noisy. Um, okay, so here's those six bits. So these, these first ones here, 0 through 5, those are the um, flag bits that we saw over the right-hand side, and the mask bits here, 7 through 12, I've drawn in the second column just here. And when an exception occurs in some SSE operation, the bit in the MXCSR register will be set to 1. So that's these bits right here, not the mask column. We're not looking at that just yet, but the bits in this column just here will be set to 1 if the exception occurred. And they're not cleared automatically either. They're what's called sticky. So they'll stay as 1 until you change them, reset them back to 0. And you've got to do that manually too. But um, if, if one of those bits is 1, then it means that at some point uh, in your program previous to, you know, you're checking the uh, exception bit, some point previous to that, the exception has been, um, yeah, the exception was caused. And they're also quiet by default, yeah. that Usually the CPU is just going to skip over the exceptions, like it's going to set the, the bit in the bit flag, but it's not going to throw the exception which is where the mask column comes into it. So the mask column contains the MXCSR bit indices for the exception masks. And by default, these are all 1, which means that when the exception occurs, when the floating point exception occurs, uh, the CPU doesn't tell you. It just keeps going. Sort of pretends it didn't happen. It sets the bit and keeps going. Uh, but if the mask is 0, if the mask bit for a particular exception is 0, and then the uh, exception happens, the CPU actually throws the exception and the program crashes. Or you get the opportunity to deal with the exception. Um, yeah, the bit will be set regardless of whether the mask is on or off. Okay, so we'll look at that in just a, you know a bit more detail in a minute. But these are the these are the six exceptions. So these are all the floating point exceptions that MXCSR cares about. We've got invalid operation, and this is something that doesn't make sense at all. Like, you know, zero over zero. That's going to give you an invalid operation exception. Uh, denormal operation, and this is where one or more of the operands in an operation was a denormal value. So that's just a really really small value. Uh, we'll go through that later when we're looking at um, floating point format. Uh, there's divide by zero, and this is uh, some negative or positive value was divided by zero. It's not zero over zero, uh, but some other negative or positive value was divided by zero. Uh, we got overflow, and that just means that the answer was too large to be represented, either in you know single or double precision floating point, whatever you happen to be using. If the answer was too large, you'll cause an overflow exception. Or you can cause an underflow exception, which means the answer was too small to be represented. And then, of course, there's also the precision error, which is pretty strange. But um, if the answer couldn't be stored precisely, but had to be rounded to some degree, uh, yeah, the precision error exception will be thrown. Okay, so a quick example of uh, setting exception masks. This is uh, how you make exceptions noisy or quiet. 
and you use uh, STMXCSR and LDMXCSR instructions, that's uh, store MXCSR and load MXCSR, uh, along with bit test and set and bit test and reset instructions uh, to set particular bits um, on and off, you know, bit test and set sets a bit to 1 and bit test and reset sets a bit to 0. Alternatively, you can set a whole bunch of bits uh, at the same time using your standard boolean operations, so OR and 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 that sort of stuff. For instance, uh, make divide by zero noisy. Okay, so right here I've uh, done a bit test and reset on uh, bit number 9, which is the mask bit for the divide by zero exception. And bit test and reset is going to set that to zero. So I've s uh, stored MXCSR to some 32-bit you know, data operand that I've declared in my probably data segment. And I've reset that bit number 9, and I've loaded that back into the MXCSR register. And every operation after that that has a division by zero using a floating point SIMD is going to cause um, an exception to be thrown. Good stuff. Might be handy. Yeah, sometimes you really want to watch out for divide by zero. It's a, yeah, it's a bit of a program breaker, really. Uh, alternatively, you can make divide by zero quiet, which is the default. And you can do that by pretty much exactly the same thing, only BTS, bit test and set MXCSR, and uh, bit number 9, instead of bit test and reset. Uh, a few other things here. We've got make all exceptions noisy. So this would be an odd thing to do, but you know, you might want to turn on all of the exceptions at once. I think your program's not going to get very far, especially if you've got, if you've got a few divides with floating point. It's probably just going to crash with a precision error. Anyway, you can AND uh, MXCSR, you know, the variable that you've stored the MXCSR register to with um, a bit mask where each of those um, bit mask bits are set to zero. I just seem to be saying bit mask a lot. Uh, or you could use, you know, the hexadecimal version of the same thing. AND it with that. Uh, or you could restore it to to its default bit mask, which is uh, all exceptions quiet, and you can do that by ORing MXCSR with one 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 one, you know, a bunch of ones where those bit masks were. I think that makes sense. All right, some imprecision exception fun. Yeah, I thought just a bit of a bigger example so that we could sort of see how this, I don't know, might fit into a program or, or how how you might generate one of these weird exceptions. Uh, so here's my MXCSR uh, D word up here. I've just set it to zero for no particular reason. And I've got two arrays. They're both um, real fours or, or floats in C++. Uh, one of them set to four little ones and the other one is set to four little threes. And then in my amazing procedure, which I've rather aptly named uh, Crash Me, um, I've reset bit number 12. So that's the bit mask for the precision exception. I've reset that to zero, so basically that just means whenever there's um, you know rounding or something going on in the floating point unit, I want to know about it. And the next thing I've done is just loaded those two uh, arrays into two SSE registers. Then I've divided the ones by the threes, and that's actually going to produce that error. Um, yeah, one third, a third, which is the answer to this division just here. A third can't be represented exactly using the um, IEEE 754 floating point standard. So that error is actually going to get thrown. Yeah, the, the program will crash. Uh, unless we catch the error and deal with it. But yeah, that's just a bit of fun. Okay, so also checking by... Yeah, checking if these errors have occurred is another interesting thing that we might want to do. So this is um, reading the first six bits as opposed to setting those ones that we were just looking at. But um, to check if an exception has occurred, you'll need the um, STMXCSR instruction again. Uh, so we could check, for instance, if there's been a division by zero. Basically like this, we perform some division operation, or we've got some code block that's just run, and we want to know if there's a division by zero. Uh, then we store MXCSR, but we AND MXCSR with 4. So 4 is the th third bit. Yeah, 4 is uh, 2 to the power of 3, so that's just ANDing. Um, you know, the uh, value that we saved from MXCSR with uh, the division by zero uh, error bit. So if that comes out as zero, then we know there's been no divide by zero. Otherwise, it's going to drop down to just below here. 
And we know that by the time we get here that there has been a division by zero, so maybe we want to um, yeah, fix it up a bit, change some of those values around, maybe set one of them to zero or, you know, I don't know. Don't know what you want to do. But uh, if there's been a division by zero, you should probably deal with it. Uh, yeah, zero over zero does not produce divide by zero. We said that at the start. That produces NAN or invalid operation exception will be thrown. Uh, the actual division by zero exception only gets thrown if it's uh, some negative or positive value over zero. Checking for precision error. Yeah, if you want to see if there's been a precision error, and there usually has been, <laughs> if you've got any divisions in your program at all, uh, it's fairly likely that there's been a precision error. But um, you can check if there's been a precision error by seeing if bit number 5 is set after a bunch of operations. So div ps, xmm1, xmmo, you know, some code that might produce the error. And then, um, yeah, and your mxcsr with 32, which is 2 to the power of 5. And if that comes out as 0, then there's been no precision error. And the answer that you've got in uh, xmm1 is exactly right. Uh, it'll almost never happen. You know, you can't even divide by 3 before you get these precision errors, but um, it's worth knowing how to check if there's been any rounding at all, especially if you do really need that precision. Um, okay, so I should mention also that if you want to... I don't, I don't think I made a slide of this. No, I didn't. But uh, if you want to reset one of these um, sticky bits, because these are all sticky, that's not going to reset by itself, that precision error uh, bit. If you want to reset it, then you've obviously got to go, um, you know, STMXCSR and then BTR, uh, MXCSR, and then what's it going to be, 5, and then uh, LD, MXCSR, MXCSR. So you've got to, you know, reset the bit exactly the same way that you would um, reset the uh, mask bits at the start. That was confusing. Anyway, that's about all that I wanted to say on the uh, MXCSR register and error checking and setting. It's really, really interesting stuff, and it just makes your CPU behave completely differently. And thank you for listening. Alright, see you later.